Go. Can you sing? Nah. Can you play an instrument? Nah. Can you read or recognize shapes and colors? <laughs> yeah, man, I can read. Then that's good, because I'm going to hook you up. Well, all right. What are you doing here? I thought you said you were supposed to be studying with bullet head. Although I knew that was a lie. <laughs> well, how about you? You told me you were gonna be working overtime. Well, I'm planning on it. Now get the hell out. <laughs> oh no, Mr. Hightower, me and Leela got a date. <laughs> I ain't wear your good shoes for nothing. <laughs> what are you talking about, Leela? Will you tell this boy that we have a date? Leela, will you tell this sugar daddy you want a young stud? I think there's been a terrible mistake. The reason I asked you both over tonight is to help me paint the apartment. Steve, you did just offer to help me fix up the place, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did, but that was gonna be after, you know, we... Mr. Hightower, I am shocked. How dare you speak to Leela that way? You know what? I think it's time for you to leave. <laughs> Thanks for hooking me up, Mr. Hightower. I ain't never have a whole room to myself. Mm-hmm. Well, you can thank me by not leaving your shoes in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Mr. Hightower, player, relax. <laughs> this is a bachelor pad. There's supposed to be shoes laying around the crib. <laughs> Look, boy, we need to make some rules here. Rule number one. If your behind don't pick up those shoes, then my shoes are gonna pick up your behind. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rule number two. If you break it, you bought it. Okay? <laughs> now, let's sit down and get ready to eat. Hello. Yeah, Romeo's here. Well, he's having dinner now. He can't take any calls. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Goodbye, Tracy. Mr. Hightower, seven of midnight on my prime macking hours. You got plenty of time for macking after you've done your homework. Which reminds me, have you finished it yet? I'm not sure. Tracy, the one you just hung up on, that's my main homework pigeon. Look, boy, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I ain't required to talk to you until the little hand is on the 9 and the big hand is on the 12. Well, you know that, Mr. Hightower. We've only been telling time since we were 16. We need to talk to you, Mr. Hightower. It's about these uniforms. We decided to take your advice and stop being pathetic. So we're staging a protest. What? I'll tell you right now, Miss Greer already knows about your protest and it's a waste of time. Besides, you ain't gonna change your mind. Yeah, well, we're not backing down. So what we wear expresses who we are. Yeah. Look, I hear what you're saying, and I'm all for you standing up for your rights, just as long as I don't have to get involved. <laughs> but you were the one talking about how people in the 60s stood up for their beliefs. Aren't you being a hypocrite? <laughs> yes, I am. And may I compliment you on your growing vocabulary. <laughs> Mr. Hightower, how would you like wearing the same suit every day? <laughs> Look, off the record, boys, you got some valid points here. But as the vice principal of this school, it's my duty to honor school policy. And anybody that protests will be severely punished. Besides, I ain't about to lose my job just so y'all can wear some saggy pants. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and welcome to Maconomics. Maconomics? <laughs> Gee, that's an awfully long word, Romeo. What does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked, Bullethead. Maconomics, the art of making the ladies want what you got, even when you ain't got nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute, Romeo. That sounds way too good to be true. Oh, oh it is, Bullethead. But with the miracle of Maconomics, you will have the Mac today and the honey tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Just follow the 
full colored handbook and this easy to listen to tape with reenactments by myself, Bullet Head, and a couple of those wild chicks from over at the Catholic school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all of this can be yours. The book, the tape, the one-on-one -on -one consultation with yours truly for only five dollars. Here's my money. I'm tired of being my own private dancer. <laughs> Congratulations, friend. And what's your name? Uh, Sylvester. And I'm hypoglycemic. Ah, uh, all religions are welcome here, brother. <laughs> From now on, your name is Sly. OK, how many of you guys have actually kissed a girl that you're not related to? <laughs> We got a lot of work to do. You stole my woman, Mr. Hightower, and I'm here to call you out. Yeah, and I got his back. <laughs> Even though uh, none of this is really my business, so I'm out of here. Mr. Hightower, what is going on here? Nothing is going on here. I haven't stole anybody's woman. I never get the woman, and I think everybody knows that. No, no, Mr. Hightower, you took my woman. Let's do this, baby. Man to man, what? Look, just a minute. Just a minute now. Alicia is not some object that you can just fight over. Yes, I am. Romeo, you're willing to fight Mr. Hightower for me? I'll fight anyone for you. See, now, right there. There you go, right there. That's the difference between me and Romeo, because I wouldn't fight traffic for you. Even though I'm not crazy for action flicks and arcades, I'm still crazy for you. I mean, they can't help it that they're losers. <laughs> ah. What? Steve, what's this, dog? Hotels, motels, holiday inns. It was, you know, that, the dry cleaners must have left them in there. You know how they, what? But they, Mr. Hightower, you cheated, man. Steve, I'm ashamed. I mean, we're their mentors. Well, I had to do something. Your thimble was killing us. Mr. Hightower, I am shocked. Don't you know that when you cheat, you only cheat yourself? All this over a silly board game. Was it worth it, Mr. Hightower? Well, I was... Was it? <laughs> All I can say is I'm sorry. I can understand if you boys would be upset about it. You, mister, need to take a time out and think about the constipation of your actions. <laughs> Mr. Hightower, he's actually in the closet. What's up, Mr. Hightower? <laughs> Romeo, what are you doing in there? Hiding from Coretta? For what? I thought this thing was settled. I thought you're taking this girl to the dance. I am, but now she's acting like I'm her boyfriend. She want me to carry her books, walk her to class, and hold her purse while she pimp slap a football player. <laughs> Look, if you don't want to go to the dance with this girl, you ought to just be honest and tell her the truth. Mr. Hightower is right. You know, you got to handle your business like a man. That's what I would do. Hey, Romeo! Well, see you later, guys. <laughs> Romeo, I thought we was going to lunch together. My girls then jacked the cheerleading table for us now. Come on, what's up? Well, Coretta, I I'm saying that's something that... Yeah, well, I wish I could stay. But the truth is, and to be perfectly honest with you, I got to go see Miss Griff. No! No, don't go, Mr. Hightower. <laughs> Coretta, I just want to let you know that I don't want to go to the dance with you. Don't, not in the face, not in the face. <laughs> Well, if you don't want to go to the dance with me, then why are you following me around? Because you wouldn't let go of my jacket. <laughs> look, look, I think you'll have more fun with somebody else. Hmm. Well, that's how you feel. Thanks for being honest. Bye, Mr. Hightower. <laughs> Where the hell was she at when I was trying to move that piano? <laughs> 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 